Hi everybody, I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for following along as I explore the unique charm of Japan's Takarazuka review. So in last week's episode, I spoke about Takarazuka Otome, essentially the Takarazuka Bible that includes the profiles of all Takarazuka actresses active at the date of release. In this week's episode, I'm going to be looking more at the Takarazuka star system as I attempt to answer the question, how are Takarazuka productions cast? So I'm going to be looking at the rather unique system of casting within Takarazuka, as well as how looking at the cast of any particular production can reveal a lot about the structure of a trip at a particular moment in time. In this week's episode, I'm going to be focusing on main productions. However, I will get into side productions in a later episode. First, as I've spoken about in previous episodes, the Takarazuka Review Company is made up of five main troops, which each stage their own productions. So, let's say the cast of a flower troupe production, it will only be made up of flower troupe actresses, potentially along with one or two senka actresses to play the more senior roles. There have been a few occasions where actresses have appeared in productions staged by other troops, however, this is incredibly rare. For example, Nagino Rumi, now an otokoyaku in Senka, was previously part of the Cosmos troupe, and during this time, she played the title role in a Moon troupe production of Elizabeth. So each troupe consists of around 70 actresses, which means the cast for a main production will be of around 70. There is thus a clearly defined pool of actresses to choose from, and this is where the star system comes into play. Each troupe is basically structured like a pyramid. On the top is the top star, after that, you have the top musumeyaku, then the nibante, the second ranked otokoyaku, and the sambante, the third ranked otokoyaku. Following on from this group, the structure of the star system does get a little bit tricky, but essentially there is a group just below that is made up of Takarazuka's heavy hitters. In this group, you will often, although not always, see a clearly identifiable yonbante, that is fourth ranked otokoyaku, and a second ranked musumeyaku. Mostly, this group consists of otokoyaku and musumeyaku, who while extremely talented and somewhat popular, are not really on track to become top star or top musumeyaku in the future. They will receive good roles in productions, but they won't be playing the starring role. However, inside this group, you'll also find some younger actresses who are potential contenders for a top position in the future. They're simply waiting for someone more senior to graduate so they can move up through the star system. Following on, on the bottom of the pyramid, you have a group of actresses who only really appear as part of the chorus. They might get a few lines here or there, but generally you'll only see them in group numbers. Mostly, this group is made up of younger Takarazuka actresses, and those actresses with star potential might receive special roles and move up through the star system. However, there will also be some more senior Takarazuka actresses in this group who for whatever reason haven't been considered for better roles. So that is the star system. When casting a production for Takarazuka, the star system is key. The lead male role will always be performed by the top star. Actually, productions will be chosen with the particular star in mind and original productions are often written for a particular top star to showcase their unique charm or special talents. The lead female role will basically always be played by the top musumeyaku. Usually, although not always, this will be the love interest of the top star. Following on, the second largest male role will be given to the nibante. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky. Because productions are chosen largely with the top star in mind, there will be times where a second role doesn't really suit a particular nibante. In addition, you'll also sometimes hear fans say something like, there was no nibante role in a production. This means that the nibante role was too small, potentially the same size as the sambante role, and so didn't give the nibante a proper chance to shine. Nibante are incredibly popular, sometimes even more so than a top star, so this can be a really big issue for fans. Next up, the third largest male role will be given to the sambante. After this, that's when things start to get a little more complicated. Often, although not always, a troupe will have a clearly defined yonbante, fourth ranked otokoyaku, and in this case, generally, they will receive the fourth largest male role. However, sometimes there will be really no such role, and so in order to ensure a popular and potentially up-and-coming yonbante receives a good role in a production, 
you might see them given the second largest female role instead. So for example, this year saw Asami Jun, the fourth ranked otoyaku in the Snow Troop, play a female role in the production of Once Upon a Time in America. And last year saw Hozuki An, then fourth ranked otokoyaku in the Flower Troop, play a female role in the production of Casanova. In the situation where there is no clearly defined yonban te, you might see something like swapping or alternate roles. In this case, an otokoyaku will play a particular role on certain days or over a certain period and then swap with another actress. After this, the good roles will be divvied out to that group of heavy hitter actresses I mentioned earlier. Often, there will be a second ranked musumeyaku who receives the second largest female role. Casting decisions will of course be made based on talent, but also on actresses' popularity with fans. In particular, there is an emphasis on giving young up-and-comers small but important roles that give them a chance to shine and gain new fans. In productions regularly staged by the Takarazuka Review Company, there are actually particular roles that act as markers of future bright stars. For example, in productions of Ocean's Eleven, the role of Linus, a young pickpocket, is always played by a future up-and-comer. For example, the role has previously been played by Mikaze Suzuho, now top star of the Cosmos Troupe, and Serika Toa, now Nibante of the Cosmos Troupe. In addition, you will also see some actresses who have special talent in playing a particular kind of role, for example a villain or an outlandish comic character. If these actresses are in that group of heavy hitting actresses, you will often see them receive this kind of role. Once all of the good roles have been divvied out to the heavy hitters and young up and comers, the rest of the roles, usually just chorus roles, will be given to actresses who sit on the bottom of the star pyramid. So that's a little bit about casting for Takarazuka. I know it can be difficult to visualise on a general level, so I'm going to use an example of a particular production to hopefully clarify things further. The production I'm going to be talking about is the 2018 Moon Troop production of Elizabeth. So Elizabeth is regularly staged by the Takarazuka Review Company and has very clear casting practices, so hopefully it will clear things up a little bit further. So if we look at the cast for the 2018 production, the lead role in Takarazuka Productions of Elizabeth is Der Todd. This role is always performed by the top star, so that was Tamaki Ryo at the time. Following on, the lead female role was performed by the top Musumeyaku, Manaki Reika. After that, you have the second largest male role, which was performed by the Nibante, Ruri Kamiya. Following on from that, you have the third largest male role, the role of Lukini. This was performed by the Sambante at the time, Tsukishiro Kanato. Interestingly, there's an important jinx around Lucchini. So according to the jinx, any actress who receives the role of Lucchini will go on in the future to become top star. So actually, if you look back at the eight productions of Elizabeth staged by the Takarazuka Review Company prior to 2017, all of the actresses who had played the role of Lucchini later went on to become top star. There does seem to be a lot of support for the jinx. Next up is the fourth largest male role, Rudolph, and that's where things get really interesting. Essentially, this role is always an alternate role, shared between two or three actresses alongside the role of a Hungarian nationalist. So the actresses selected to play the role of Rudolph will always be rather young, usually in their first seven years of performing with Takarazuka. Receiving the role of Rudolph is a really important marker that an actress has the potential to be a really bright star within Takarazuka in the future. In addition, usually one of the actresses who is playing Rudolph will also play the role of Der Todd in the Shinjin Koen or Rookie performance. So if we look at the 2018 production, the role of Rudolph was played by Ari-chan, who is now Yonbante of the Moon Troop and is really regarded as a strong potential for a future top star. She also played the role of Der Todd in the Shinjin Koen performance of that year. The role was shared with Kazama Yuno, who is currently probably a Gobante, a fifth ranked otokoyaku in the Moon Troop, and is also regarded as a strong contender for a future top star position. In addition, actresses who have previously played the role of Rudolph include Yuzukare, current top star of the Flower Troop, and Asumi Ryo, former top star of the Flower Troop. So if you do go see a production of Elizabeth, I really recommend paying close attention to the actress who's playing Rudolph. Following on, in Elizabeth, there are three other really good Musumeyaku roles, Zofi, Miss Windish, and Madame Wolf. 
Zofi is a villain character and she's always given to an extremely talented, more senior Musumeyaku, often right before she leaves Takarizuka. Miss Windish is given to a younger Musumeyaku, who is often a potential good future candidate for a top Musumeyaku position. Madame Wolf is reserved for an actress who is an excellent singer and has strong comedic skills. After this, there are only really three other good roles for Musumeyaku in Elizabeth, which gives you an indication of how limited Musumeyaku roles in are in any production. Essentially, if you're not in that group of six highest ranked Musumeyaku, in addition to the role of Elizabeth, you basically will only get to be part of the chorus. So for example, Misono Sakura, who became top Musumeyaku of the Moon Trip in 2019, was only part of the chorus in the 2018 production of Elizabeth. For Otokoyaku, there are a handful of other good roles for more junior and more senior actresses. In particular, the dual role of Dark Angel and Madeline, a prostitute, is always given to a young up-and-coming actress, Otokoyaku or Musumeyaku. So for example, in the 2014 Flower Troop production, the role was performed by Minami Maito, who is now Sambante in the Flower Troop and a potential strong candidate for top star in the future. Meanwhile, in the 2019 Flower Troop production, the role is played by Rano Hana, a Musumeyaku who later went on to become top Musumeyaku of the Flower Troop. So that's how casting works for Takarizuka. The star system is really the key consideration. It is a delicate balance. The actresses at the top of the star system must be given roles that allow them to shine, while the rest of the good roles need to be divvied up between the veteran, talented actresses with their own fan bases and younger up-and-comers. Looking at the cast for any production can really reveal a lot about the structure of a particular troupe, in particular who the future key players are. If you do go and watch a production of Takarizuka, I really recommend paying close attention to the important roles given to younger actresses. You might even spot the future top star or top Musumeyaku. So in next week's episode, I'm going to be looking at an important consideration for all Takarizuka actresses as I attempt to answer the question, how are Takarizuka actresses' stage names decided? I really hope you'll tune in. And if you've been enjoying this series so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care. Bye.